and that there is a life after that. And you're going to see God, and God is going to question you based on your life. Did you leave, leave, uh, uh, Did you go about your daily life based on the commandments that I gave you, or based on your own whims and desires? Okay? And then God is going to question you. How would you respond to God then? Is that you answer honestly and sincerely based on your point of view, rather than someone imposing it on you. So what do you think? How would you answer that question? Where did the universe come from? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. You don't need to be an astrophysicist to answer that. <laughs> no, but I'm because even they can't answer it, trust me. Yeah, exactly. I think I would come closer if I was an astrophysicist, but I don't know. They tell you, they tell you like the beginning, like the Big Bang and how it expanded and all that. Yeah. But I don't think they can go beyond that. The reason for that is because science works on the basis of space and time. And they can't think of space or time before the universe existed. So it's a conundrum that they have to uh, deal with, basically. So anything, look, you don't have to be right or wrong. I mean, at least don't be wrong. But from your point of view, how would you answer like this question if it came, if somebody asked you this? Well, what is your background, if you don't mind me asking? What did you study? What did you study? What's your background? We're, we're studying film. Film? Yeah. Oh, you don't want to be on camera? No. The irony. We're, we're behind the camera. <laughs> That's good. So maybe you want to film me, you know? Like talking about this topic. I don't know. Yeah, but, ser but seriously, have you given a thought to such a question? Um, it doesn't really concern me that much. No? Like, when I go into existentialism, it's not really where the universe came from. It's just like, why am I here? Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter. Also, have you asked that question? That's another philosophical question. Yeah. Why am I here? So, they don't want to be on camera, yet, so. They are film people who don't want to be on in front. They like to be behind. So, yeah, that's, that's another philosophical question that people ask. The purpose of life or the purpose of existence. You thought of that? Um, yeah, I have like, no conclusions. But... Obviously, I mean, not everyone says that. Okay, I conclude this is. But you know, the question here is not to put you in a box or to put you in a corner. The question is for you to, yeah. to be sincere with yourself because I'm sure everyone asks these philosophical questions to themselves and they try to formulate some sort of a response. How would you answer? I think there is a force. I think there is. Um, I like to think that there is like a higher being that um, at least guides the universe and guides okay. us. And because that that's what makes sense in my mind. Right. So when you say higher being, like a, like I'm, God or like a, I'm thinking of God. Is that what you're thinking yeah, as well? Yeah. Okay. So you 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 actually believe in a God? Yeah, I think I can say that, yeah. Okay. Well, so if I ask you, because there are lots of people who believe in God, and their God is different. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got hundreds of religions who might believe in hundreds of different gods. So how would you narrow it down to, let's say, a short list or something? Or maybe one, I don't know. I don't know how you function. That's where it gets By the way, I'm a Muslim, so I firmly believe that God is one. So I believe in pure monotheism. And this is similar to Judaism and, uh, well, I think to some extent other religions as well. How would you shortlist your, or do you not, for, for you, is that not important? I grew up Christian, and so I'm used to the idea of like one God, or at least a unified God. So that's what I, makes sense to me. Okay, do you still hold on to that belief? Yeah. Okay, because in Christianity, you believe, obviously, Jesus is God as well, and then you believe his Father is God as well, and then you believe the Holy Ghost is God as well. So how do you reconcile with that, with your principle of oneness of God or mon pure monotheism? How do you reconcile that? I don't reconcile it because I feel that that's um, a little bit semantics. How is it? How is it semantics? Because that's just getting into nitty gritty for me. Yeah. Where you, it's you, like, you can just stand here behind the camera oh. instead of going a mile away. Yeah. Guys, they don't want to be on. Yeah, they don't want to be on. So let's let, let's respect their wishes. Yeah. I think, I, yeah. 
Yes, sorry, you were, you were saying it doesn't need to be reconciled? Did you say it doesn't need to? No. So how do you... How do you make sense of these three different entities as one? How do you make sense of that? I don't, because when I do, it's too much of a headache for me. <laughs> so you just accept it? Yeah. Well, no, not accept it. I think uh, that's just like a part of discovery, where it's not something I can put my all my headspace into, but it's not something that I um, also think that it doesn't matter completely. So what? I'm, still, I'm still learning. Yeah, fair enough. What if I told you, if that is your belief, in the Trinity, then you're, in effect, going against going against uh, the teaching of Jesus Christ. What if I told you that? Wait, say that again. Okay. So if you believe in the in a triune God, are you listening? Yeah. So if you believe in the in a triune God, in a Trinity, then that belief is something which is not what Jesus advocated. Not, not what any prophets in the Bible advocated. How would you respond to that? Um, yeah. What do you mean, yeah? So you're going, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're basically going against Jesus Christ's teaching. If you think so, yeah. Not if I think so. That's what the Bible says. Um, yeah, if you think so. <laughs> are you are you just trying to evade the question? I'm not avoiding it. I'm just like that's not really what matters to me. No, but so do contradictions not matter to you in your belief? Contradictions don't matter, and contradictions are everywhere. So I'm no, but kind of always working with them. Not really. I mean, look, if if you believe that, do you believe in a square circle? In what? A square circle. I'm not hearing you now. Okay, come closer. I don't you want me on camera? Don't worry. You guys are film people. You know how the focus works. None of them are pointing towards you. So what I'm saying is that a squad. My conversation on camera as well. Yeah. yeah. They are recording me, but yeah, not recording you. I don't want to you. see that on the conversation because I just don't want to be recorded right now. Do people know your voice? Are you are you famous? He's going to be one day. Well, yes, I so, but but he's not now, right? So we can film him now. So look, the reason the reason I asked you, can you if you believe in contradictions, then you believe something like a squared circle. You know what the squared circle? A circle and a square. Oh, a square and a circle. Existing as one entity. Is that such a thing? A square and a circle. Yeah, a square, it's called a square. I think I know what you mean. It's a square circle. It's, it's, it's basically what basically. philosophers use to show contradictions in, in, in your speech. We're gonna die and yeah. we find this so this is, a contradiction cannot be real. So you can imagine it, but it cannot be real. In reality, you don't have, a, you, you either have a square or you have a circle. You can't have a square circle. You see what I mean? Just ignore him, it's just background noise. So by the way, this is Speaker's Corner. We have hacklers like him who come and hackle a discussion, in a discussion when you're having one. So that, that is what I me meant about uh, contradictions. In real life, a person would not accept because there's no such thing as, as, as contradiction in reality. Unless you, unless you say it, say for example, a married bachelor. Can you think of a married bachelor? No, I can't. Why? Because it's a random question, honestly. No, because it's a contradiction. The reason you cannot think of a married bachelor is because it's a contradiction. And as humans, we operate in such a way that we cannot accept, unless you're insane, yes, unless someone is insane, you cannot accept a contradiction. And that is the reason if you say, I believe in one God, then you cannot say at the same time, I believe that God is three in one. Because that's a contradiction in terms. God is either one or not. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, for example, when Jesus says that the only true God is the Father, if he makes such a statement, then can anybody else be the only true God? Yeah, according to what you're saying, when you're leading on. Of course. Not according to my saying. This is what Jesus says, like I said. I gave you the reference as well. John chapter 17, verse number 3. Yeah, I'm not denying that. Yeah. So not, if, if Jesus... No, no, that's fine. I, I just want to know your response. If Jesus says that the only true God is the Father, and you say, no, the only true God is the Trinity, whom should I believe? Jesus? Oh. <laughs> By the way, these, uh, these people, they are here first time at Speaker's Corner, so they are feeling a bit nervous. I can sense that. 
No one is here to attack you, just asking you no, questions. Yeah, I'm not trying to... This is Speaker's I'm... Corner, we speak here. Yeah, you speak and I'm just here to listen. I'm not here to... No, no, it's, it's a conversation. What would you say yeah. to people who believe in the Trinity but would say that they're polytheistic? Would that be a problem for you because that's no longer a contradiction? If you're a Christian and you say you're a polytheist, then you're not a Christian, are you? Because that again, like I said, is a contradiction in terms. Because every time when a religion says that they are a true religion, but then every time you find contradictions within it, then it actually is not a true religion, is it? Because truth by itself cannot have internal contradictions. That is the definition of truth. That it should be free from internal contradictions. Yes, the example of married bachelor I gave you, you cannot have a married bachelor. So the person is either married or he's a bachelor. You can't have it both ways. So you need to accept one. Because every time, look, the reason, you know, earlier you said it doesn't matter. I think it matters. If you believe in God, then surely you will be believing in the hereafter, in life after that. Am I right? Yes. So to get the right religion matters a lot. So if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket and say, I'm going to believe in this religion, and I hope that I'm being sincere and with all my heart that this is the right religion. What if it turns out to be the wrong religion? And then you face God, and then God informs you that you were, you were given the option to seek out the true religion and the true God. And you stuck with the tradition that either your parents or your family or your environment Yes? Impacted your thought process and your thinking, and you never bothered to look for the truth. What are you going to say to God that? So, I think if there is a God, and there is an afterlife, and I get to heaven, and I face God, and I tried my best to be a good person, I feel like I would want to believe in the God that would send me to heaven either way. Because even if I had the opportunity to seek truth, I sought the truth for me. Right. Okay, so when you say you seek the truth for you, yeah. you mentioned you're about, about being a good person. Yeah. How do you define good? Um, if I'm helping other people, mostly, if I'm, you know, taking care of myself, if I'm keeping my relationships that I, you know, was, that I want to be keeping on, if I'm... Could, could it be possible that what you consider as good, your friend here considers as bad? Could it be possible? Um, yeah, but then we get into moral objectivity versus subjectivity. Yes, but your, your, what you said good is subjective. Yeah. It's not objective, right? Yeah. So that is what we're, try, we're trying to establish. If everyone thinks for themselves and they're, all their point of views are subjective, then there's bound to be contradictions again, isn't it? Exactly. Because, so I think God can operate in our schema of our subjectivity and work within what we think is good and judge based on ourselves and not what we do with other people. No, but th like I said, if you're... If you're understanding of what is good is subjective yeah. and other people's understanding is also subjective yeah. yes then there's bound to be conflict of course. yes because like i said what is good for you might be bad for someone else what is bad for them is good for you maybe yes and that's why i said this is going to cause chaos rather than peace and harmony because to me in order to have a system which is functioning there should be no disharmony there should be no internal contradictions there should be no conflicts within the system. And that is a good system. So back to you, how would you get around this? How would you reconcile this problem of a system which has contradictions or conflicts in it? Well, I think I just fundamentally don't believe in a system. But you, you I think you, you do. Do you, have a, do, you have a driving, do you have a driver's license? Oh yeah, I do. Do you operate in a driving, uh, in a system where you have to drive according to the law yeah. rather than your understanding or your... That's true. So you follow a system. But this is, this is not, you know, municipal law. This is, you know, universal law. And I think that's a little bit different. No, but the, 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 you said you don't follow a system. I said you do follow a system. Oh, okay. But when, when talking about universal law... There's no, I, I don't know what you mean by universal law. Well, you're saying that God, his system, there's only one system, and you follow that system, and that's the religion that you choose, right? Uh, no, I didn't say there's only one system. So as a Muslim, I believe that God created us, and then he sent us guidance. He did not just let us fend for ourselves. And over the years, over the centuries, over the millenniums, yes, God sent different prophets and messengers who are human beings, 
and they are the ones who are the role model that they had to follow in order to be a righteous person, to be accepted and to attain salvation. So people had a system which was obviously established by God, but then they had different systems at different eras. So for example, in the time of Moses, the system was different to the time of Jesus and from the time of Jesus to our time. There's slight changes, but the overall, what do you say, the core purpose has always been to believe and worship the one true God. See what I mean? And that's what I mean. You see, you need a higher authority in order to give you the jurisdiction as to what is right and what is wrong. What is permitted, what is prohibited. Just like the traffic system, there has to be one system. Yes, isn't it? In order for that law to, to function in that country. If there are different laws, yes, for uh, let's say different cars or different people or different roads, then there's bound to be chaos. Yes? So let's say in a state, I don't know, in America, maybe you guys have different laws in different states? Is this, yeah. Are the traffic laws different? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there might be slight changes, but the overall function is not to injure someone or yourself. Yes? That's the, that's the bottom line. Similarly, in the Sharia, which is a system that we follow, that God has ordained, there's also something which is a core message, like I said, which is the worship and the, and the belief in one God. And what do I mean by worship? It just doesn't mean that you, you prostrate to God all day and night, that you, you just uh, worship God in the sense that you go to the mosque and that's it. You, it means obedience to God. So that includes not to harm someone, not to kill, not to steal, not to lie, not to be bad to your neighbor, even they might be from a different religion or, or even not following a religion. You have to be good to your neighbor. And this all comes under the jurisdiction of what we call the Sharia, which is the law or the system of God. Now, obviously, you, you have certain things that you have to abide by as a command and certain things which are prohibited. Yes, And this is what I mean about something which is not subjective. So one Muslim might think that, uh, I don't know, uh, that he might, he might be okay to not pray, for example. Yes, so we have five times prayers on a daily basis. Yes, so you might think that, okay, I don't need to pray because I'm a good person. Yes, I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't harm someone. I'm good to my family, good to my neighbors, but I don't want to pray. Will that work? No, it doesn't. Because this is something which is a command, which you have to do. Yes, just like in your traffic system, you have to drive carefully. You need, you need to be not intoxicated, for example. Otherwise, they can charge you with an offense, dr drink driving, for example. So similarly, there are do's and don'ts in every system. And this is, again, like I said, subjectivity does not work in any system. It has to be some authority telling you what are the do's and don'ts. And if you don't follow them, then there is consequences. So what do you think about afterlife now? Um, I mean, I, I get your point, and I think it's an interesting point. I don't think that really is the way that I want to live my life. But I appreciate that it works for you. And I think my son works for me. And yeah. that's all. No, by the way, it's not about your life or my life. It's about the good of everyone. Yeah. So say, for example, there is a life after death. Yeah? yeah? I don't know if you believe in God because he does. I don't know. Are you on the, days I do, some days I don't. Are you on the fence? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Agnostic, but not, a, sure. but not atheist. Not atheist. I think it would be, yeah, anyways. Fair enough. So let's say there is a life after death, yeah? Yeah. And, okay, let's start with the opposite first. Let's say there is no life after death. Okay. That you and I die, and that is the end of us. Yes, okay. the end. So we both become dust or whatever. And regardless of what I believed, or regardless of what you believed, yes, it does not matter because our life ended when we died, and there was no life after death. So everything that we believe is irrelevant, isn't it? Yeah. So we, we both basically end up in the same situation. Yes? Yeah, we, we both end up in the same situation. And there is no loss on either side. Do you agree? There's no what? There's no loss on either side. Yeah. Yes. Now you flip the coin, you flip the situation, and that there is a life after that. And you're going to see God, and God is going to question you based on your life. Did you, leave, leave, uh, uh, did you go about your daily life based on the commandments that I gave you or based on your own whims and desires? Okay? And then God is going to question you. How would you respond to God then? Um, 
I think if I never truly believe that God Sorry, I can't hear you. Okay. Like, if I never truly believe that God gave me these commandments, then why would I follow them? And why would he expect me to follow them? If God is an all-knowing, omnipotent being, then he would know how to talk to me to get me to believe in what he said, right? Yeah, he does know how to talk to you. That's the reason I mentioned earlier that you had prophets and messengers who brought to you the message of God, which is a scripture. So as Muslims, we believe in the Quran. And in the day of information, ignorance is a choice. Yeah? So the fact that you haven't actually looked for it, you haven't seeked out God, then on the day of judgment, what are you going to say to God? That I didn't have time? So here's the thing is I did seek out God. Okay. I didn't find him, and I'm okay with that. And I think I'm happier living my life this way, and I think a God that I do believe in would be understanding of that and just so you, you, work with my system. So hold on, let me get this right. You're saying that regardless of how you lead your life, you think God is always going to be happy with you? I think, yeah. I think if I live my life and I'm truly trying to be a good person on my own terms, then a God that I want to believe in is going to understand that. And if he doesn't understand that, I don't want him to be my God. Okay, in, in that case, you're like I said, you know, we talked about subjectivity earlier. Yeah. So you're you're leading your life based on your own whims and desires Correct. rather than what God commanded. But in the code of God, that is not how it works. For example, like I said, the traffic system, they don't care what you think or what you feel, the way you should drive. Yes? So you can say, okay, I feel like having a lot of beer today and I'm going to drive the way I like. I'm going to not care about any traffic, any red lights. Yes, I'm going to, because I don't want to be slowed down. So I'm going to break all the red, red uh, traffic lights and I'm going to just go and drive the way I want. Do you think they'll accept that? Um, obviously there are consequences for your actions. There you go. This is a system that is proven, like you can know it's a physical, tangible system, and God is intangible. He is not physical, present in this world. I have to have faith in him to believe in him. I don't have to have faith in the system to know that I'm going to get arrested if I don't try. I would have to have faith in God to feel like I'm going to go to hell after I die. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good response. Look, obviously you see things in this world and you know the, the choices that you're making and you know the consequences. The whole idea of a religion, yes, uh, so in Islam we are told that this life is a test, yes? So just like you would go to an exam, examination, and then you would give a test. Would you expect your teacher to pass everyone? Um, actually, yeah. Everyone? Yeah. Regardless of whether they worked hard for the exams or not? Um, well, obviously, if they work hard, they should pass, but also I think, you know, God is God of mercy, right? No, no, the question was about the teacher. Okay, well, metaphors are imperfect, right? It's not a metaphor, it's a real-life situation. Oh, well, I don't know. Is it's not a hypothetical question. Okay. Is, is a real, so you, you know there are, you've been to a college, university, yeah? Yeah. And you know that teacher doesn't pass everyone. That's the reality of life. I've had, I've had teachers who do both, and the teachers I like better are the teachers that pass everyone. So you're saying those people who didn't write a single answer on the on the exam uh, uh, on the sheet, the teacher passed them as well. Seriously? Yeah, those students don't usually show up. I think that us. teacher should be fired. Okay. Honestly, yeah. because yeah. Huh? yeah, yeah, because what what it shows is shows injustice. Yes. Imagine the other students who did work hard. Yes, they studied the whole year, and they they worked really hard to pass the exam. And you're saying this teacher at the end of end of term comes along, doesn't care about what anyone has, whether they worked hard or not, and the teacher just passes everyone. I think that would be, that teacher will certainly be fired from any college or university. I don't know which teacher you're talking about. But let's be, let's be realistic. That's not the real world situation, right? Even if it's an exception, but exceptions don't make a rule. We are talking about the real life situation. No teacher in the right mind would pass everyone. The whole idea of a test or examination is to see how much you have understood how much you have learned. You see what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, the, the test is pointless, is it not? If everyone passes all the time, why would people even bother going through the test? Teacher, just pass me, yes? You know me, I'm a good person. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. Am I right? Yeah? Maybe. Not maybe, that's a fact. Unless you want to deny the actual reality of this world, okay? It's not, like I said, from the very start, this is not about winning points. This is about being sincere, sure. yes? Because at the end of the day, look, trust me, if there was a life after death, and we talked about the two scenarios where there is no life after death and we both die, then none of us really lose out, is it? 
right. But if that really is a life after death and you face God and you face the judgment, then who's taking the bigger risk? The one who prepared for that test, for that day of judgment, or the one who said, I want to lead the life the way I want? I just don't think I believe that there is a test. Yes. No, but that's your that's your personal view, right? Yeah. So like I said, again, subjective. I gave, Remember I gave you the two scenarios? So your scenario was already covered in that first scenario where there is no life after death and there is no test. So we have already covered that. Now I've switched the scenario where you will have a life of, after death and there will be a judgment. So who really is taking the bigger risk? The one who prepared for it, like in the test, or the one who never prepared for it? I guess me. I guess I never... No, it's not about you personally, trust me. Right. This is not about you personally. Of course. I'm, I, that's the reason I never mentioned if you, uh, like I said, you personally in that sense. It is about everyone. Yeah. Okay? So those people who want to lead, lead their life with their own, uh, based on their own whims and desires, then surely on the Day of Judgment, they have got nothing as defense against God. Because you see, for you to be a good person, and, and you don't need to follow a religion in most cases, yes? You can be in 80s and be a good person. Yeah. But in the sight of God, in the sight of God, you know what is the biggest sin? What is the biggest crime? Is it's to associate others in worship with Him. And what does that mean? I don't mean another God only. Yes, even though that is the prime reason, yes, to say that uh, God will not accept your worship if you worship others who are not really God. So when I say God, I mean people, you know, they worship all sorts of things. They can worship, for example, money, material. They can, I don't know, some people are more inclined uh, to collect a lot of wealth. And for them, that is all that matters. Yes, and that basically is their God. They have made that their God because they worked hard all their life and that was the prime focus yes yeah. and a god is someone who takes who, who, who seeks adoration who seeks your attention so this this is what i'm saying so on the day of judgment i think in order to be in a in a position where you are not taking maximum risk like you are now yes and like I said, this is not only you personally, this, this message is for everyone who thinks in the same. And trust me, you're not the first one and you won't be the last one. Yes, there are many people who think like that. So as, as a person, you know, God has given us intellect. God has given us the ability and the faculty of reasoning. So it's only fair that you seek out, are you paying attention? Yeah. Okay, you seek out the true God. Yes, and this is left up to you. Yep. Yes, I don't know. Read the Quran, for example. Have you ever read the Quran? I've read some of it. Yeah, what do you remember from what you read? Um, I remember it's really just about taking care of each other. Okay, is that it? Okay. We just, yeah. I mean, well, Yeah, so, so basically the Quran is, like I said, the guidance. It's a book which tells you about how to please God, how to attain salvation how to pass the test basically. Yeah. You know the scenario of the test? Yeah. Yes, how to pass that. Sim just like you at your university, you would study certain books because the teacher has recommended those books. Then if you read them, your teacher says you're going to pass the test. Yes, but if you don't, then you're going to fail. So this book, the Quran, is what will help you pass that test. On the day of judgment, then you will stand a chance. Yes, like I said, only God is the one who's going to judge. Not me, not anybody here, not you, no, no one, but him. And that's why it's called the day of judgment. So all we are saying is that in order for you to minimize, I know you, you guys are young, quite young, okay? And this is something that we all go through life, yes? Not everyone wakes up in the morning and thinks, which God should I worship now? Okay, maybe that's not the priority in your life right now. But like I said, because this, at the end of the day, this is once you die, and you're going to be in front of God. And by the way, this life is temporary, isn't it? Yeah. The life in the hereafter is going to be eternal. Okay? We normally, you know, when we, when we travel, we don't prepare for the transit destination. We prepare for the main destination, isn't it? So if you come from America via, say, I don't know, uh, the Caribbean, for example, and in the Caribbean, you're just going to have a transit, yes? But your main destination is England, then you, when you came from America, when you, when you prepared your luggage, you packed for England, not for Caribbean. 
Yes? Maybe a few clothes for that, but most of your clothes might be for all this, this main destination. Similarly, because our life, like I said, is temporary, it's limited, maybe 80, 100 years, I don't know, max, then what? So, person who, is, who thinks rationally, logically, they will prepare for the main destination. And that's why I say, prepare for the hereafter, go and seek knowledge, seek out the truth, and this is up to every person. You know, we have a lot of, what do you say, um, options today with the internet, with people around, with your travels, you know, seek out the truth. So, yeah, I think we, we, we covered most of the points. You guys got any questions? Nothing. No, but thank you for a good discussion. Yeah. Would you like a copy, a free copy of the Quran if I give you? I would, I would take it. Yeah. You? Yeah, I like free books. You like free books? Good. Make sure you both read it. Yeah, it'll be my third uh, Get two, please. Yeah. yeah. What's, your, what's your name, by the way? I'm Joe. Joe, you are? Emily. Emily. Very nice meeting you guys. So my friend's just going to get the Quran and hold on, hold on, he's going to get it. It's just over there actually, just on the table. So how, how was your trip so far? Good. Good? Done a lot of museums, done a lot of shows and movies. It's been fun. Okay, there you go. Those are free copies of the Quran for you. Thank you. And yeah, next time you guys are here at Speaker's Corner, do ask the Muslims or in your country as well. Which place? In the US, you guys are from? Uh, Utah. Utah. Okay, I'm sure there are Muslims there. Maybe less? There's, there, mostly in Salt Lake, but yeah, there's, there's some. There. Yeah. So you guys got questions, you know where to go. You know, honestly, walk into any mosque, don't fear. Yes, because they'll be more than happy to help you guys out if you got any questions. Thank you. Okay, take care. Have a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.